Alright, so much like last year, what I did for M. Night Shyamalan before After Earth and the year before with Christopher Nolan before The Dark Knight Rises, I'm going to go over every David Fincher movie, which I've seen, I believe all of them, at least that he's directed, except for one, which we'll get to in a minute, but we'll go over them, my thoughts, even if I've reviewed them already, which I've done too, so there. Alright, so David Fincher, what can I say about him? I really like this guy's sort of dark, kind of realistic, gritty style of directing. Just so you know, uh, just to remind you, this is mostly unscripted. I try to do these little unscripted things every once in a while just to work on my ab-libbing skills, which as you could tell are not that great, but okay, we'll start with the first movie he ever directed, which was Alien 3. I have not seen Alien 3. I don't really want to see Alien 3 before anyone says anything. Maybe it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying I'm gonna hate it. I don't care what the critics say. You, you've seen my reviews. I don't care what the critics say. One of my favorite movies of the year so far is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. But Alien 3, I really love the first two Alien movies. I, I actually think I like the first one a little bit more just because of the very slow, atmospheric, claustrophobic feel it has. The very, just sort of that low budget charm that some movies do really well, some do terribly. But I still do really love Aliens and I just thought Aliens ended so well. and. I'm not saying an Alien 3 is automatically bad, but I know what happens in the Alien 3 that David Fincher made. I don't want that to happen. The beginning and ending just completely make it unfair to me. I think the premise is kind of cool. They're, what is it called, a prison planet, I guess? And there's just one alien, and that's cool. And maybe the movie's good. I might watch it at some point, and I won't judge it. But I just do not like the way that movie worked. And David Fincher hates it. David Fincher hates the movie. He disowned it. If you like Alien 3, great. Maybe I will love it. Maybe everything just works out perfectly. But I just don't like the way that movie begins or ends. And I know that happens. Unless everyone lied. Unless every plot synopsis I read lies. Whatever. Okay? Let's just move on to Seven. I love this movie. Seven was probably one of the biggest surprises I've ever seen. I knew the ending. I don't think there's a person alive now who doesn't know the ending. What's in the box? Why can't I do that? I tried that once and it failed and now I try it again and it fails but and yet I was still in huge suspense at the ending and pretty much the rest of the movie throughout the entire thing. I am hooked. I am just like okay that's awesome. Let's go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep, oh, one of the best villains I have ever seen in a film. Near the end, his speech at the in the back of the police car, I almost want to just side with him because it's like, yeah, that's actually a pretty good point. It's gritty. I love the way it looks. I love the two main actors. Brad Pitt is great. Morgan Freeman. Okay, I'm going to try to do a Morgan Freeman impression. Morgan Freeman is the greatest thing in this film. He is quite amazing and I am very glad that they did not go the original route with him shoot and shit with him at the ending, but I will not spoil that for you because I'm Morgan Freeman. <laughs> okay, that was bad, but anyway, everything about this movie just worked for me. I love the story, I love the direction, and I love the pacing. Like, that's the one thing I was worried about. I'm like, okay, is this going to be a slow movie? And it kind of is. The only sort of nitpick I've really got with it is that it does start to drag in the final act. Like, after the Pride fiasco, that's where the movie really slows down. And it's like, okay, now I'm getting bored. And then it really picks up near the end, but for those, like... 20 minutes or so, it's like, okay, I'm kind of dull, I'm kind of bored. It doesn't treat you like an idiot, it, but it's not hard to follow. I think that's the best way to describe it. It's straightforward. It doesn't 
go through so many twists and just become so convoluted that you can't understand it. It lets you know what's going on so you can enjoy the ride. I think that's what I like about it the most. So, I am, because of those, that really slow, like 20 minutes or so, I'm gonna give this movie a 9, but it is a high 9. Uh, my favorite David Fincher movie, I'll say that right now. Alright, here's a, gonna be a quick one. The Game. I saw this movie for the first time, I think, last year, last summer. And I, I actually was very surprised with it. I was like, alright, this is well paced, it's a good mystery, the acting's good, it looks nice. I even like the ending. That's the one thing a lot of people don't like about it, is they don't like the ending. I was like, I'm cool with that. I'm That seems like the perfect ending for this story arc. So, really, the only th thing I don't care about this movie for is, well, it doesn't really have that much in terms of rewatch value. A lot of the stuff I enjoyed about it was, where's this going? How did that happen? How's this going to end? And really, when you watch it, Again, it won't have that impact. I'm not saying it'll be bad, but it just won't be able to have that punch that it had the first time. So I'm going to give it a 7. Fight Club. Oh boy, am I tired about talking about this damn movie. Basically, everything from my review is true. But here's the thing. I first saw this movie, I think it was 09 or 2010. And I was like, okay, that was alright. I don't really see what the big fuss is about, but I thought it was alright. And then I just never really watched it again for a couple years. But I kept thinking about it. One day, I was at a flea market, and I saw the DVD, not the Blu-ray, the DVD, for, it was like, five or six for 20 bucks, and I got like, Four others, and I'm like, okay, Fight Club, I'll get this, and I watched it again, I was like, okay, I get more of this movie, I really, really love Tyler, I really like the way it looks, and I really like the social satire, I just really don't like the ending, and I stand by that. The movie thinks the ending is probably better than it is, no, this guy's either one, dying, Two, going to jail. Three, losing his balls. Or four, all of the above. I'm really not sure what to give this movie. On one hand, I really like some of it. On the other hand, I really don't like other parts. So I'm gonna give it a seven, but it's a very high, it's almost a 7.5. I'll say that. Panic Room. I'm not going to really talk about this one that much because I talked about it in Nordic's Forgotten Flicks and everything I said in there is true. It's suspenseful, it's got really good acting, really great direction. I really like some of the camera angles. Uh, great villains. I really enjoy this movie. It's And I just love that it's not pretentious. It doesn't try to be anything more than what it is. A home invasion thriller. Does it need to be anything more than that? I still really like this movie, and I give it an 8. It is really underrated, and check it out if you haven't. Zodiac. I should not like this movie as much as I do. This movie is, what, close to, let's see, 157 minutes. That is, like, over two and a half hours. I, and, uh, another spoiler warning, the ending, it, it leads to nothing. They still don't know who he is. So basically, the entire movie is just completely pointless. And yet, I really like this movie. It just hooks you automatically. The pacing was damn perfect. So yeah, direction, the story, both very good. The only thing is, uh, the characters are a little bit not one-dimensional. They're just nothing... That's spectacular. We've seen characters sort of like this before. If I were to say, what was David Fincher's objectively best movie? I'd probably say this. It's not my favorite. I'm giving it a 7.5 because honestly, it's not a movie I can watch like anytime. 
The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Okay, okay, okay. It's not that boring. It's just... Alright, here's my experience watching this movie. For the first half, I was like, okay, this is interesting. The characters are okay. The pacing is flowing alright. It looks nice. It's alright. It's This is a, a pretty decent movie. It's And I'm thinking... Alright, it's probably almost over. It probably got, what, 15, 20 minutes left? I look at the time, it's not even halfway through. And after that, it just slowed down to where I did not care about anything. I wanted it to end. I could barely pay attention. I cannot tell you how this movie ends. I cannot tell you every form of plot. Any, I cannot tell you the story. This one, I don't even think is that long, but it just drags. And it's so... I don't like saying this. Oscar bait? Pretentious? I think that's the way to describe it. It's not the worst movie ever. It's technically impressive. The acting is fine. So, it's not bad. I could see some people really liking it, but it is not my thing. I will never watch it again. I'm gonna give it a five. Five? The Social Network. All right, here's the interesting thing about this movie. I have not seen it in a long time. I've seen it once. I was actually gonna rewatch it, but I just didn't have the time. I am so booked with a ton of other things. But the thing I really like about this is that I have not seen this since it first came out on Blu-ray. I got it like the week it came out and watched it. Which I believe was like early 2011. And I still remember most of this movie. I still remember really liking it. I remember Mark Zuckerberg just being the biggest douche. I remember Andrew Garfield being one of the most likable characters I've seen. And Justin Timberlake in this movie, like, just the... A million dollars isn't cool. You know what's cool? A million dollars. And Brenda Song, Linda Tipton's in this movie. She is in an Academy Award winning movie. God, I wish we saw like a cameo of like MySpace Tom on here. That would have just been hilarious. So I'm going to give this movie an eight and a half. It probably is better, but I do just want to watch it again even though I just don't have the amount of time to do that. And last, we have The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Anyway, I don't have much to say about this. I think it's a bit too long. It's all very good. I think it goes on a little too long though. Like, this movie has like five endings. Like, I'm like, just... Even Return of the King wasn't this tedious. Just stop, stop. Oh my gosh, you were fine. Stop. And honestly, don't have much more to say about this one. I give it a 7. I'm not sure how it works in, in terms of the book or the original movie. So, that is every David Fincher movie. Just a little thing. Little quick reviews for those. And uh, I hope Gone Girl's good. I don't know. Yeah, I'm filming this on like the 12th of September, so I don't, there's no reviews yet. Maybe it'll be completely panned, but I hope it's good, and I hope to see more from David Fincher. This is my order as of right now, and uh, that's about it. So, I look forward to seeing you guys again in October, where we'll get into some horror type reviews just a couple and I will see you all next time bye